and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by hand shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice, and decide the right for a man's afflicted. The word of the Lord. Generosity, 
faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now those who belong to the Christ Jesus has, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The word of the Lord. And Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The advocate Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus. Group of candidates for confirmation of the Harvard County Cluster of Catholic Origins. Thank you, Mother Burris, for presenting this fine young men and women. I'm glad I had a chance to meet you briefly before. I'm going to ask you a about a Bible story. Did you ever hear the Bible story about the Tower of Babylon? Okay, some of you are shaking your head. Tower of Babel goes all, all the way back, all right, into the book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible. Now, basically, Genesis answers the question, how did we get here and what went wrong? All right, Genesis starts off by telling the story of creation, right? But then it talks about how sin got in the way. So we had all kinds of things, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, all those things, right? Well, another one, Noah's Ark. That's in there, right? Well, one of the stories is the Tower of Babel. Now, here's what happened. In Babel, in the city of Babel, the, um, 
the people decided everybody, the Bible says everybody spoke the same language, everybody understood each other. But what they did is they used that to try to unseat God. Here was their plan. This is really, if you think about it, kind of silly, right? They started to build a tower. And they said, we're going to make this tower so big, it'll go way up into the sky. And we'll be able to get God, and then we'll take over everything. That's what they want. That's what they really believe. And so they're looking up and they're building this tower and say, man, is this thing big? And God's up in heaven. And God's looking down and saying, what's that puny little thing down there? <laughs> what do they think they're doing? Well, you know what happened? Their wickedness, their evil, it started to divide them. And then they were divided. They couldn't speak the same language. They couldn't understand each other. They couldn't work together. And so that becomes part of the history of the world. People who aren't working together, not understanding each other, and, 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 and working at odds, division, sin, hatred, violence. Now, fast forward. The story of Pentecost, just Sunday, past Sunday, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost, right? The coming of the Holy Spirit to the apostles. Jesus promised in the Gospel today, if you love me, Father and I, we will love you. We love you more than you can ever imagine. And we will send you the Holy who will fill your heart, who will set you on fire, who will lead you in all good things. Okay? Well, Pentecost, that's exactly what he did, right? Remember, they were in that room and they were afraid and they were hiding and they were confused and they were praying. And they had that moment where the Holy Spirit came down upon them. It was in the house kind of shook, tongues of fire came down, the wind blew, right? All these signs that something amazing was happening. But more importantly, something happened inside. Something happened deep inside them because you know what happened? They were filled with the Holy Spirit. No longer were they afraid. No longer were they confused. They went out and started to speak to everybody, right? They went out and they started to speak to all the crowds. And everybody starts shaking their head and say, wait a minute. These guys are Galileans. They don't speak my language. How can I understand them? And then somebody else would say, how can I understand them? You understand them and they understand them. We all speak different languages, but we all understand them. See what the Holy Spirit did on Pentecost? Was the Holy Spirit came to undo the evil of battle. Does that make sense? Are you still with me? All right. Okay. So, so here's the thing. We heard this beautiful, beautiful reading from the letter to Galatians, right? And Paul writes to the Galatians, and he talks about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I bet as you were getting ready, you learned about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Did you learn about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, right? Remember those? Don't worry, I'm not going to put you on the spot. <laughs> All right, so you learn those seven gifts. Well, then there's something else we talk about. Those are the things that the Holy Spirit gives you on the inside to help you. And when I say that prayer for confirmation, I'm going to call out those gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible also tells us there are certain fruits of the Holy Spirit. Right? There are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, what happens on the inside, but the fruits of the Holy Spirit are what people see on the outside. It's what happens to you. It's the effects. It's the, it's the impression you leave. When you have this encounter with the Holy Spirit. So did you hear the fruits of the Holy Spirit? The fruits of the Holy Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Hear that? Kind of jo love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Sounds like the kind of person I'd like to know, right? 
That's what people will see in you because of this encounter with the Holy Spirit. You see, here's the sad reality of the world. The sad reality of the world is that the fruits of Babel are still very much around. The fruits of the Tower of Babel are still very much around, aren't they? And boy, we're seeing them in awful, awful ways these days. Hey, listen, I live on Broad Street in Columbus. I can tell you firsthand. <laughs> Bad. I was so glad driving up to Kenton today. <laughs> we have to call out the evil of racism. We have to call out the, 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 the terrible things that have happened. But we also have to say, wait a minute, the answer is not violence either. The fruits of the, of the battle are things like violence and misunderstanding and hatred and division. And it's not just now, but we see this a lot. We see too much in the world, right? But the fruits of the Spirit, here's the good news of confirmation and the good news of Pentecost. The fruits of the Spirit are stronger than the fruits of battle. And the fruits of the Spirit will always have an effect and undo the evil of that. It really will. It did it on that first Pentecost, and it will continue to happen. Remember what I said when we were saying that prayer? That, that you hear it a lot. Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. That's the prayer of the church through the centuries. We keep asking the Lord in every age, when he did in Pentecost, do it in every age, send forth the Spirit and renew the face of the earth. And that's what God is doing. You know, in that reading, that another beautiful reading from Isaiah, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse. Now Jesse was the father of David, so, so Jesse represents like the, the kingship, the, the, the good old days, right? But we, we hear this reading and, and sort of has Christmas images to it, you know, and think of Advent. Oh, isn't that pretty, you know, the shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse. When, when do you have a tree stump? When the tree gets cut down. See, bad things happen. Bad things happen, and the tree got cut down. But Isaiah said, never fear. Out of brokenness, out of sorrow, out of tough situation. Hey, listen to this. All of us looking at each other. You guys with face, face masks on, right? Out of tough situations, the Holy Spirit can make good things happen. A shoot shall sprout, and that shoot shall bring, bring life. And the Spirit of the Lord will be upon him. By the way, who is the shoot that sprouts from the stump of Jesse? It's Jesus, right? God himself. God himself comes to live with us. Something good happens. Well, friends, something amazingly good is happening here tonight. Right here, for all of you. Because God, who loves you so very much, wants to be part of your life. God, who loves you more than you can ever possibly imagine, comes on this earth as a human person, Jesus Christ. And Jesus hand, extends the hand of friendship to you. And what he's saying to his, his friends, by the way, in that gospel, that was the night before he was to die. And he's talking to them about friendship, and he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, no matter what happens, as ugly as it gets, I will always be with you. You can count on me always. In fact, I'm going to send you the Holy and I will dwell with you. That's how close I'm going to be. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit and I'm going to live on the inside. And I'm going to beat with your heart. And I'm going to, I'm going to set you on fire. And then you, so, so number one, the great thing that's happening today is Jesus is sending you, he's keeping that promise. He's sending the same spirit he sent to the apostles on Pentecost. But now, he's sending it to your life. So you will know you'll never be alone. Never. When things are good and happy and successful, you'll be there. But when things are painful and sorrowful and frightening, you'll be there. When we have our great successes, you'll be there. When we fall flat on our face, He'll be there, always to pick us up, to get us on our way again. He's coming, he's taking a presence, he's here to stay.
That's what this sacrament is about. It's here to stay. But, number one, that's what he's doing for you. But again, remember those fruits. God's sending you on a mission. And so, so through those fruits, love, joy, patience, gentleness, you're part of the transforming of the world. You're the voices of hope and of promise. Is it possible that God is sending you the Holy Spirit so that God can bring through you, through you, joy, happiness, and patience, and peace to other people? Could that be the effect of your presence on this earth? That it will be. That's what we're about. And thank you. Thank you for saying yes to this gift. Thank you for letting God work in your life. And thank you for letting the fruits of the Holy Spirit just shine through you, bringing us light in the darkness, hope in the world, that the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit are so much more powerful than the fruits of Babylon. Now, I'm going to ask you to renew the promises you made on the day that you were baptized. Remember that? Right? I don't mean you remember when you were baptized. I don't <laughs> remember the told you that, right? All right? So I'm going to ask you to renew the promises that you made, or really your parents and godparents made, in your name on the day of baptism. So those of you who are going to be confirmed to me, would you please stand right in your places? Stand right now. So I ask, do you reject Satan? Do you renounce Satan and all of his works and all of his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered death and was buried, who rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? I do. Friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Father Almighty for these adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that He will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with His abundant gifts through His anointing, form them more closely to Christ the Son. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, brought these your son, servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, power of God. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord through Christ our Lord.
Jesus is sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit.
Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. As we desire to follow the Holy Spirit in this world on our path toward heaven, we place our needs into the hands of our Heavenly Father. For the whole church, locally and throughout the world, instituted by Christ on the cross and the Pentecost, that it may always be a witness to God's love for the human race and to his offer of salvation. And for our shepherds, including Pope Francis, Bishop Brennan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wisdom upon our civil authorities as they lead us in serving the common good. For a greater respect for the sanctity of life and religious liberties. And for ongoing strength in serving the needs of those in our communities suffering from the coronavirus pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishes of Immaculate Conception and Our Lady of Lourdes, for our witness to the Gospel in our local communities, and for the new evangelization, that many may be inspired to come to our parishes or return to an active practice in their faith by our invitation and outreach. We pray to the Lord. Lord our prayer. For our teenagers, receiving the Holy Spirit tonight in the sacrament of confirmation, that they may stay strong and courageous in their commitment to personal holiness and to share the gospel with their friends, and that they may know our love and support for them in their lifelong relationship with Jesus in the Catholic Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For all of our youth, that they may open their hearts how the Lord wants to work with them as they become adults, especially in the vocations of priesthood, religious life, or holy and chaste marriages. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, our prayer. And for those who are sick and those who have died, especially among our family and friends, we commend them to the care of Jesus, our good shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we come to you this evening at this holy mass to offer to you these wonderful people. You have created them in love. Now you give them the mission to be holy and to evangelize. Protect them always and give them courage and strength as they commit to being your disciples. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank 
with all the host of angels, we sing to you with the whole our hearts, crying out as we need a Our Father, 
Let's pray. <laughs> Accompany with your blessings from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that all trials overcome, they be glad in your church by their holiness, through their work and their charity, foster a growth of the world through 
Christ our Lord. Amen. Girls, I'd like to thank you once again for being with us here this evening. And I want to also, as Patrick, uh, offer my congratulations to all of our congregants this evening. And this group, I will have a um, social distance group photo afterwards. <laughs> Uh, I'll see more on there, but uh, also we'll have the uh, gift bags as well to attend in the plane or two. But again, thank you, Your Excellency. Great, thank you. Thank you. You know, um, I just want to say two words a word of appreciation, a word of congratulations. So, first, a word of appreciation to all those people who walked the journey with you, to those who taught you the faith from. I mean, little children all the way through, and even now. And those who inspired you, helped you to know Jesus in your life. And then to all those people who made today's celebration so beautiful, so prayerful, so reverent, in spite of everything, <laughs> we thank you one and all. And now you were confirmed. Just look around and right where you are. It's easy because you just got the people next to you. And you see people who love you very, very much. I am proud of you, and today we offer you our warmest congratulations. And again, I know, I have perfect confidence that we will all see those beautiful fruits of the Holy Spirit every time we talk to you. All your kindness, your gentleness, all the people right around you, right? We'll see all those great gifts uh, just at work, powerful ways. But you know what? This gift is a forever gift. This is a gift that gets you through life. I always tell people I was confirmed on May 13, 1975, by a bishop named Bishop McGann in my home parish of Our Lady of Perpetual Health on the South Shore of Long Island. Fourteen years later, the same bishop, Bishop McGann, ordained me a priest at the Cathedral of St. Agnes. So wouldn't it be great for about 14 years? <laughs> we were right here. Kenton or an aid is celebrating a first mass or a religious profession. I am telling you, this diocese is chock full of vocations. I'm amazed at how many in different religious orders, many religious women, um, and then and, and priests, uh, and, and good, good, solid vocations. I will say this God is calling each and every one of you, every single one of you. He's calling each and every one of you in a different way to do amazing things. And God will give you everything you need to answer however he calls you. So tonight, on your confirmation night, I beg you, get that permission, begging you. Please be as generous and confident. Please be as generous and courageous in responding to where God leads you. The way that you're generous and courageous tonight, accepting this gift of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. May God, Father Almighty, bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he make you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May his only begotten Son who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power, the confession of true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit give us the fire of charity and God's disciples bless you. He blames and gathers one to the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.